This week we are hand building a new challenging design. It's gonna be an acorn with a little face, with little eyes, pointy noses, and a calming expression. These little acorns became my obsession so lately, and I finally found a moment to get my hands on some clay and get to them. I still have plenty of ideas around this design, but Without further to do, we're gonna discover this design together. We don't need much tools. A couple of sponges, one used as a base to give support to the piece. The smaller sponge will be used to get rid of any extra bit of clay, to apply some water and smooth out the surface of the acorn. A couple of brushes, which will help me shape up the noses and eyes. We'll need some modeling tools and a bucket for water and one for sleep. And of course, a bit of clay, the color of your liking. I decided to go for some red clay, since I want to glaze them with a white glaze which will give different tones of brown depending on the thickness of the same. And the last ingredient is to have an open mind and start playing. We learn the most by allowing ourselves to experiment and have fun. Will the design work? Who knows? But surely I'll learn something out of it. So my advice don't overthink it, just give it a go. And there we go, we are going to start with 50-60 grams of clay for each acorn. This will always depend on the size of the piece you want to obtain, of course. First, I roughly shape the body of the clay into an acorn shape, making sure I define those three areas. The stock, the cupola of the scales and the nut. Once I have all those bases ready, I'll be moving on into adding the faces. I'll be also preparing the noses and eyes in advance, allowing the nose and eyes to dry out a bit before adding it into to the body of the acorn so that it is easier to manipulate without losing the shape and this is the moment when i refine the details of each acorn i'm currently working on so now that we have the eyes and noses ready let's add them to the body of the acorn I'll start by scratching the surface of the acorn and the nose and gently adding some slip to those areas. The slip, in this case, is the same clay I'm using for the acorn, but mixed with more water, which will act as a glue, helping me to attach all the pieces together. So we're gonna apply some pressure, making sure that the nose and the body of the acorn are glued together. Also by applying some pressure, we will remove any air bubbles that can be trapped in between those bits of clay. Then, with a modeling tool, I'm going to incorporate the nose into the acorn. And this is the moment in which I'll be shaping up the nose. I do not trust this step since the personality of the piece will start to appear and if you listen carefully, the piece is going to guide you through the process and it's going to tell you the shape that it wants. It's always so fun to work on the noses. With the modeling tools we are going to shape the eye area before adding some clay. Somehow you are shaping the bone structure of the face which will make it easier to see where the eye should be placed. And again we are going to be scratching and applying some slip on both sides. Applying some pressure and start shaping up those little eyes. The wooden tools will help you to sculpt and shape, but I always use the brushes to refine the final touches. There is no need to apply a lot of slip in order to attach pieces together. As you can see, for the eyes, I'm almost applying just a bit of water. And if those two bits of clay have the same humidity and are on the humid side, they won't need much slip for them to fuse together. The moment in which I'm using the wood modeling tools to open the eyes is always so fun and satisfying. It feels like the piece is born even though I still have plenty of work ahead. I'm able to see who was hiding behind the shape of the acorn. Even though all the pieces might look like the same, the connection with each one of them is so different. I don't know if you could perceive that from your point of view, but I definitely feel it. This is the moment in which I'm going to help myself by using the brushes to open the eyes and shape them up, since in this moment the clay is quite humid and easily the shape of the eyes can collapse or with the wrong movement you can just deform the eye area. We are going to move on and start working on the stock and the couple of the scales. I pierce the stock first since I'll be hanging the acorns for the core or as I do with my personal acorn, I hang it from my overalls. I was not lying when I said that this design became my obsession. It keeps me company in the studio, so it's fine. This, if I'm not mistaken, it's the step that takes the longest. I spent around 20 minutes on the details of the scales. This is why I decided to speed up the video and share some bits, but not all of it. Since the process is quite repetitive, there is no need to show every single step. Even though, I have to say, it's quite mesmerizing. For the cupola, I use the metallic tool. 
since it's thinner will help me to make deeper marks. As you can see, I do not worry about making them perfectly even, since in nature the scales will not be perfectly placed or shaped. I honestly do not remember why or when this design came to my mind, but it was written on my project list for a while now. I don't know if you have seen any of my work, but nature is such an important source of inspiration for me all the living creatures that we encounter in the woods and also the ones that we do not encounter but we can still sense or even feel or even imagine. While working on the scales I always find some spots that need to be reworked or refined around all the area of the face but it is important again not to obsess about them too much as I was saying before. And once the couple is finished I sign the piece and work on the stalk, giving it some texture by scratching the surface or even removing some of the clay in order to give it more texture. Do not be afraid of scratching, piercing or or marking the pieces because if you want to glaze the piece later on the glaze is going to cover part of it this is why you want to make sure that the motif or the details are defined otherwise the glaze could cover that and the piece will not reveal all the work and hours you spend on those details even doing so sometimes the glaze can cover it too but at least you were aware of that and help your future self by making it deeper into the body of the clay and here you have the little acorn what do you think? Does it look like an acorn? <laughs> okay, let's play a game. Can you guess how long it took me to work on this specific piece? Pause the video and comment down below the time you think it took me to finish this acorn. From the beginning of the sculpting process till now. I'm gonna give you time, don't worry. Did you write it yet? Okay, here you have the answer. It took me 53 minutes just to make one acorn. What do you think? It is a lot or not much? Thank you so much for joining us, guys, and create these acorns together. If you have any questions or any doubts that came to your mind throughout the video, go ahead and comment down below and I will help you and try to resolve them. For now, I'm gonna leave you, love you, and see you next time. Bye.